relationship between class and uh, EMSA is limited just to a few, albeit important areas. And moreover, in my presentation, I will focus mainly on those issues where uh, EMSA and Ajax cooperated in the past with a certain degree of success. Since its inception, as early as July 2003, EMSA and Ajax established an open dialogue on general issues concerning the future role of EMSA, particularly inspections of classification societies, port state controls, accident investigations, and possible cooperation within, with Ajax, in particular as concerned to QSCS. Soon after initial contacts, it was concluded that Ajax and EMSA relationship had a very good start and that Ajax should keep the same kind of attention for other matters within the scope of work of EMSA. Since the very beginning, Ajax extended to the EU and its agency EMSA any and all assistance in establishing an appropriate and effective auditing system that would encourage full confidence in the delegated statutory activities of class societies and in their overall survey performance. This offer of assistance was based upon IAC's continuous experience of operating their quality management system, QSCS. 2004, the EMSA high-level panel of experts on, on the safety of double hull tankers was established as a follow-up to the seminar on maritime safety and double hull tanker design organized by the Commission in November 2003. Ajax was invited to take part and to help find solution for identified problem areas together with straightforward recommendations. Particularly, Ajax carried out the following tasks allocated by the EMSA panel. Development of cargo tank code and performance standard, development of unified requirements on initial house survey requirements, development of technical standards for fixed hydrocarbon gas detection systems. Next couple of years, EMSA inspections on Ajax members were in full swing. The EMSA inspection function was seen by Ajax as a means of reducing the burden of audit performed on its members by the administration as now only EMSA would expect ROS to verify conformance against the requirements of the Commission Directive. First missions of EMSA staff in Ajax member societies proved to be challenging, as EMSA inspectors represent a fresh perspective on classification of society's activities. Second inspection cycle of EMSA on Ajax members as a result, Ajax suggested that it should meet with EMSA regularly to discuss so-called horizontal findings. EMSA inspections started to play a significant role. The task of maintaining the data on EMSA inspections of Ajax members was centralized at the Ajax QSCS Operations Center, where member societies' final inspection reports of EMSA were analyzed and summaries sent to Ajax Council. 2008, EMSA identified the following as their areas of future focus during inspections. Convert hull tankers to double hull, VLCC to VLOC. Passenger ships upgraded to comply with the new requirements of Chapter 2.2 of SOLAS and STAP 2009. EMSA concern was that these projects are complex and may not get the necessary attention and care by the classification societies. 2009, sulfur directive issue. Industry concerns with safety implication arising from the implementation of EU directive regarding the requirement for ships to use a distillate fuel with less than 0.1 sulfur at birth in community ports, ports from 1st January 2010. As a response to these concerns, the Commission convened a technical meeting at EMSA on 15th October 2009, where safety of ships boiler plants was the main focus of the discussion. 
During the EMSA workshop, IAX made a comprehensive presentation about the risks inherent to the use of low, low sulfur fuel with the equipment which was not designed and approved for this purpose. IAX input included valuable technical information, namely the, re the prerequisite for class and the need for inspection, approval, certification before using such a fuel. Thorough consideration of the matter led all stakeholders, including the Commission, to better understanding of the safety risks related to use of su low sulfur fuel and eventually resulted in a solution, a publication of EU guideline that took account of this discussion and established reasonable implementation and enforcement actions by member states, allowing ships time to comply safely. This solution allayed the safety concer concerns of the industry and brought about the desired environmental benefit. 2010, EMSA published its uh, five-year strategy. Among other things, EMSA indicated a potentially large overlapping scope between the inspections EMSA carried out in accordance with international and regional requirements and those that the member states were to assess under Article 11 of the class regulation. Based on this, EMSA considered whether it could assist the member states by auditing ROs within the limits of international and EU le legislation. Upon request, EMSA could combine its core task inspections with additional verification on behalf of member states. An initiative such as this, which would aim to increase the efficiency of auditing of, auditing of ROs, could be welcomed by member states and the entire maritime industry. In this context, it is relevant to note that in recent years, IAC societies, some of which have authorization as recognized organization from over 150 flag states, have seen a significant increase in the number of audits fl that flag states are undertaking. It is to be noted that the data on the screen regarding the number of audit days does not include time for preparation and follow-up activities. While direct auditing by a flag states is acknowledged by AX to be one of the ways that an administration can monitor its ROs, it is not the only way. Other ways and means include, but are not limited to, acceptance of audit, audits by independent auditors, reporting by the RO to the flag state, participation of flag state personnel in the work of the RO and confirmatories reviews service by the flag state personnel. I read with interest the EMSA work program 2011, which in addition to describing the well-known tasks of EMSA, also gives information about what is in the pipeline in terms of developing further the agency's modus operandi. With regards to the three main areas within the scope of work of EMSA that are of particular interest to IAX members, that is inspections of classification societies, port state controls, accident investigations, we note the following. First, we note the shift of EMSA in EMSA's emphasis in inspection of classification societies to visits to regional and branch offices of classification societies, site offices at shipyards and visits to ships. This could be a rational shift in our view. In the area of the port state control, IAX welcomes development of harmonized training tool for port state control officers by EMSA and its wider work towards harmonizing port state control in and by member states. This will indeed contribute to a more harmonized level of PSC in the European Union, establishing a more unified level of maritime safety. IAX members recognize the valuable part played by port sea control and wish to cooperate closely with it. This cooperation is enshrined in three IAX procedural requirements. That is, transparency of classification and statutory requirements, procedure for responding to port sea control, and procedure for providing list of class ships to equasis. EMSA also plays a vital role, role in marine casualty investigations, particularly in the operability and further development of the European Union 
database to store casualty data and investigation report of the member states. In this context, IACS members stand ready to assist whenever possible in the assessment of technical causes and deriving lessons to be learned. In concluding part of my presentation, it is IACS view that the objectives of the agency relating to class are fully addressed through a number of tasks in several key areas. It is our understanding that EMSA was successful in, fu in fulfilling its numerous tasks in the past. Therefore, it deserves credit from the Commission and the entire maritime industry. IACS has always been working side by side with EMSA since its inception, and today we need EMSA to be working alongside us even more than before. Last year, in accordance with the IACS commitments submitted to the Commission, the IACS Quality System Certification Scheme found the direct audits of members by IACS' own experts replaced with the audits by six separate accredited certification bodies. IACS audit teams include technical experts on classification and certification matters, most of them coming from classification societies and former IACS auditors. ACB's audits are observed by the established Quality Assessment and Certification Aid as part of the requirements in Article 11 of EU class regulation. EMSA's assessments are also applied to EU ROs by the EU regulation, I mean Article 8. Also under different purposes, they are very important to identify so-called horizontal technical issues applicable to all ROs for the sake of consistency. In conclusion, I would like to stress that IACS stands ready to assist EMSA in, in fulfilling its mission of ensuring a high, uniform, and effective level of maritime safety, maritime security, as well as prevention of and response to pollution by ships within the EU. Looking forward and speaking as a member of the general public and not as just uh, IACS chairman, I wish that uh, EMSA tasks evolve in such a way that EMSA is able to see emergencies before they emerge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for this contribution.